one of the legendary moments around the actual final and the game of this is when the South African Airways plane did the low level fly past of the of the stadium. What do you think that moment meant to the team? Who gave him permission to do that? <laughs> I, I believe he's now actually that pilot is the fleet captain <laughs> of SAA. Yeah. And the engineers are checking the structure of the site. <laughs> it was fun. It was, I mean, I've never experienced something like that in my life. The Boeing was coming in at it's just five yards higher than the top max of the stadium. And the noise of those engines, because as it came in, it, it, it kind of glided to the right into the stadium. And as you reached the stadium, you opened it up. And that blast of those engines, because I'm getting goosebumps on the it just dropped the whole stadium. And there was a loud cheer. And, um, and obviously there were a good luck bunker on the bottom of the wing and and then the rest of the street. Another uh, spine tingling moment. How did you feel when you saw President Mandela come out wearing Francois' number six pink box shirt? Well, once again, what a nice gesture from, from that man. It was very special. I mean, Francois also, he was, Francois was a very emotional guy as well. Uh, on game day, I mean, everyone's emotional on game day, but uh, Francois was very emotional, obviously, because just the gesture of wearing Francois' shirt as the captain. Um, because obviously Francois had meetings with, with Madiba throughout the run of the World Cup. They were regularly on, on, in contact with telephone conversations. And um, to see uh, Madiba coming out with Francois' uh, shirt on was, was quite remarkable. And in terms of the nation, showing the nation as well. Because we, you know, obviously our nation consists of a lot of different people. And to show the nation as well, let's stand behind the, the spring box for this game. Uh, and winning is there, they'd be backing in the country, backing and the team. If you look at the 95 South African squad and, and the 2007 South African squad that also won the, the, the Rugby World Cup, how would you compare the two, Marius? Uh, the 2007 World Cup didn't play the All Blacks. That's the difference. No, well, I mean, uh, the 95 World Cup was, was much better. <laughs> no, um, 2007, uh, the athletes we got to the, uh, the, the, the ability of the players. I mean, I was picked in the 95 World Cup because of scrimmaging ability. I wasn't expected to run with the ball to break the ice to get all of that. None of that happened anyway. So, I think the, the 2007 World Cup was won by a group of players with much more athletic ability. You know, uh, Jake was a good coach. There was a good, there's a good source of players coming through South African rugby in the last couple of years, three, four, five years. Uh, but what made '95 more special, I think, personally, is the fact that it was the first year we were offered a World Cup to host the World Cup and then to take the win as well in South Africa. What that did for the country, I think, is indescribable. Uh, I think the question that we all really want to, to know the answer to, Marius, is what are James Dalton and James Small doing now, <laughs> and do they get invited to your squad reunions? <laughs> <laughs> They're both in ID. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do get invited to, to the reunion. Uh, we had a 10 year reunion, 2005. <coughs> James, James Small pitched up, wearing a grey suit and a pink shirt. He said we've got to wear Springbok clothing. He didn't. It's just the same old himself. Uh, James Dalton, I uh, saw him a week ago. He's a dad. He became dad. Uh, I think his boy is month old. And he calmed down a bit, you know. <laughs> James was a rough time. He was a rough time. Uh, they're both into business and it's going, no, it's going well. You've represented your country, Marius. You've been part of the World Cup winning squad. you played Super 14, Curry Cup Rugby, over 100 games in Newcastle. If you had to pick one sporting achievement as the most memorable for you, what would it be? Well, I've played 16 years professional rugby. Um, 30 years in total, only as a fighter squad. What a loser for. Only a big fatty fighter squad. Uh, and I must say that the World Cup uh, will take it um, by far. I mean, what happened that day and what happened during that period is, is I think, I, you know, there's no words for what happened there. Um, 
it's, it's, it's done, we've done it, um, and it's by far the best memory that I've got in terms of recording achievement um, in South Africa. And probably will have. Moving on to your um, your life after the, the World Cup, you managed to qualify as a lawyer while still playing professional rugby marries. Do you think there are many similarities between being a lawyer and a tight head prop? Let's get this for the Sharks! Yeah, well, there's no physical violence. In which? Nobody likes you. Last couple of questions. Um, obviously, this is another very big year for South African sports. Do you think this year's Football World Cup will have a similar effect in bringing the country together um, to what we saw in '95? I've seen those pool, uh, I've seen the draws for the pool matches. Um, this is a great opportunity for South Africa again as a hosting nation for the, World, for the Football World Cup to. Uh, to show to, to showcase what, what South Africa offers. And I think if we do well well there was a look in the ninety five World Cup, no one said who said we we're gonna win the World Cup? Who said it? Very few people said we we're gonna win. Very few people said we we're gonna win Australia in the first match. But that self belief was generated after that pool matches were played. And I reckon if we can do the same with the football World Cup that will be the same experience that we, uh, we as Final question, you'll be glad to know. This afternoon, you very kindly popped along to the Operation Breakthrough Rugby Training. What were your impressions of the program, and are there similar schemes in South Africa? Yeah, uh, what a great initiative to be, to be, I mean, to be, uh, to be uh, involved with an operation like this. Um, I just think it's a privilege, you know, to uh, to be involved and to help kids from from deprived areas, to privilege kids to enjoy themselves. Because the sport is mainly about enjoyment. You've got to enjoy it. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be forced upon you. You've got to enjoy it, and even more so in, in a team environment. Because there's, there's people from different environments, different races, different perspectives, different upbringings, and we're all going to learn to get together, to get along, to, to accommodate one another. And there's no other be better medium than, than doing it through sport, than do, through, through team sport. And um, when we coach kids back home, in, in townships, in schools, we focus on enjoyment and, 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 and living themselves through the medium of sport. Uh, we've, got the sim we've got similar initiatives in South Africa, you know, um, helping kids, um, creating pride, within themselves, creating self-belief, uh, and I think it's, it's a wonderful, uh, sport is a wonderful medium to, to help these kids to, to, to give a sense of self-belief and self-belonging. Marius, um, once again, uh, thank you to South African Airways for making your, your trip possible. It's been an absolute privilege to have you with us, um, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, Marius Herter. <laughs>